welcome to another episode of Jim's Open Garden. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, the beetroot plants are more than ready to go in. You don't want them to get much bigger than this uh, because you do run the risk of them bolting. So as soon as they get anywhere close to this kind of size, uh, which is about kind of two inches tall, you most certainly want to get them in the ground. So I'll just show you me doing that now. Okay, so the ground's nice and um, it's been rotivated over, and the ground's nice and fertile. It's had plenty of um, good stuff put into it. So what you want to do is you're going to put these in two rows. Um, and I'm going to put the, the actual plant um, it's around, I don't intend obviously to prick these out so um, they're going to go in um, basically where the um, you know we'd expect the sort of the beetroot so you want about kind of six inches or so between the plants and just over that um, between the rows so I'm going to go back here with the next one and all you need to do is basically just take them out of the so as you can see the roots have gone all the way down to the bottom, so it wouldn't be too long before these became pot bound. Now, I'm not going to um, thin them out yet. I'm going to let them sort of fight it out a little bit, I guess. Um, you know, because on some of these, I've got multiple plants, there's like two or three plants in each of the cells. So I'm not going to take them out. I'm just going to leave them in. One thing you do need to do is make sure you keep these well watered for the next couple of weeks, because obviously the roots need to go down and uh, you know if the weather's warm um, you know you don't want to run the risk of um, you know the plants drying out because that's obviously, obviously that's when they'll bolt all them to see if the plant gets stressed so there's actually about four plants in that one there. <coughs> the other thing you can do obviously when you're doing this is sort of if any of them aren't quite right you can always discard them at this point whereas if you just sewn it in a row um, the, um, you know, you'd be stuck with whatever was in the ground, basically. So, right, I'll just carry on and do this and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so there's the beetroot in. So all I've done is I've put them all in, um, as I say, about six inches apart, and I've um, given them a good watering in. And I've um, also put some slug pallets on. Now, slugs don't typically um, attack beetroot too much. They are known to do in it. But um, at the moment, because there's not much plant life about, they're more likely to, um, you know, to have a go at them. And whilst they're young and tender, uh, it's worthwhile just protecting them with a few slug pellets. So that's the beat routine. I'll show the, those in a couple of weeks' time as soon as they get themselves settled in. OK, so as you can see, the onions are more than ready to go in. So what I'm going to do is now plant these. You don't want to get these much bigger than this, otherwise they can get pot bound. So I'll just show you, just putting these in. Okay, so all you need to do is just very gently pull them out. As you can see, the roots are getting to the bottom, so they basically want to go in right now. So what I'm going to do is just dig a little hole. Obviously this ground is really fertile. Um, there's plenty of chicken in your um, grass and that being put in. Then all you need to do is just drop them in the ground like that. Um, go along. You need to plant them about... Um, it's about six inches or so apart you know you want to give them plenty of room to develop you don't want to put them in too close so these will be going in about six inches apart and just plant them slightly deeper than they were in the uh, in the tray i'll just get this last one out and i'll show you what they look like when they're finished okay so i've just about got a uh, just about a row and a half in um, of the seeded onions so the rest of this now will be um, will be the um, the bulb, you know, the set onions. So I'll fill the rest of this area in with seed onions. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like when I've got it finished. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay, so it's time to pot up the um, the uh, the cauliflowers. Now these are the ones I put in um, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, and as you can see, as a result of damping off, all of the um, the plants in the middle have um, died off, which has left me with these basically these ones around the peripheral or the edge of the um, the tray. Now that's not too much of a problem because I wasn't going to grow too many of these anyway, so there's more than enough there uh, for what I want. Now in exactly the same way as we do all of the other. Um, all of the other brassicas, all I'm going to do is pot them up into uh, pots about this big. Now what I would normally recommend is one of these square square pots that I normally use, but I've run out of these now, so basically I'm, I'm going to um, start to use these round ones. Square ones are better for a number of reasons, basically. It stops the it stops the roots from going round and round at the bottom becoming pot bound. Um, it's also, they also stack better together and um, they're also easy to get the plant out um, when you come to pot them out, with these you can you can very easily sort of sort of squeeze the side and get the plant out. Where, where with these, it's not quite as easy. But um, as I've as I've run out of those, um, what I'm doing is potting them up in this um, in these um, pots. Now it's in exactly the same way. All you need to do is go underneath. Again, always handle the plant by its roots. Never never handle the plant by its um, its stem because if you damage the stem. Um, you know the plant will never recover. So by just just by holding the roots, what you want to do is gently tease them apart. So there's one good plant there. Unfortunately, I've got two quite close together here. So I'm just going to grab the bottom part of the stem like that, and then just by slowly teasing them apart. I am going to lose some roots by doing that. So, but I've still got a reasonable amount of root on there. Um, and then go to your pot. Um, make a hole roughly about the same size as the roots that you've got. Um, there's perhaps about too much to compost in there. Like that. You don't want the you don't want to damage the roots in it any more than you need to. And then you can plant them slightly deeper than they were. Um, and try to so don't worry about that. And keep the the compost reasonably firm as, well, as soon as you go on down there. Now these are going to be going out very shortly anyway, so they're not going to be in these pots for too long. But obviously, if I left them in that tray, the roots are just going to completely net into each other and then uh, when I do come to separate them the, the, there will be too much root damage. And what you want to do is when you're introducing a plant to a new environment what you need to do is do it in stages. If you've if you've got them in the greenhouse the best thing to do is to put them outside for a couple of days um, and then what that'll do is it'll get the plant acclimatised to the outside because um, plants can get shocked um, so that's basically what you're trying to avoid. So for example you know, sort of pricking them out and then putting them straight into the ground will do basically three things. One, it'll change the temperature because you're going from a greenhouse environment to outside. Secondly, you're disturbing the roots. Um, and thirdly, um, you know, the watering, and that's going to be different as well. So, you know, if you if you can do it in stages, that's the best way for the plant. Then, uh, you know, the plant gets the least amount of shock. If a plant is shocked, it'll tend to kind of slightly shut down. Um, and it'll and it'll stunt the growth of the plant. If you can do it in stages, uh, the plant will cope with that a lot better than if you do it all in one go. So that's always the best way to think about it. So I'm just going to carry on potting these up um, exactly the same way um, as I've done with the uh, the calabrese and the kale. Uh, there's no difference really, apart from the fact I'm using different different pots. And as I say, these will go outside probably in about. Um, just over, um, just over a fortnight, I'd say, uh, within the next few weeks, anyway. Um, and then, you know, that'll. So what I'll do is I'll have these in the greenhouse for a week, in these new pots, and then I'll then take them outside to harden them off, and then from hardening off to going in the ground, uh, perhaps another week. So you know, kind of in stages. You know, you, you go from this to this and then next week they'll go outside and then the week after that they'll go into the ground. If you can do some stages like that you'll you know you won't shock the plant. Right so I'll just continue with these and I'll show you when they've finished. Okay so just so you can see this is the ground prep for the the second lot of beans and also the gourd. So the gourds are going to be kind of in this area here and around the back of this tunnel here and then from that end of the um, this particular tunnel and there the beans are going to go. So what we've got on here is the ground's been dug over um, all the perennial weeds have been um, taken out and there's a bit of bindweed in here. That's all gone now. 
um, and on top of that basically I've put in four um, four barrel loads of um, um, compost out of the compost bin so I've emptied two compost bins um, across this ground um, as you can see here this is the well rotted down sort of two year old um, compost there and then um, there's been six barrels full of um, six barrels full of um, grass cuttings that have been cut this year and then on top of that we've got the wood chip so there's uh, the two barrels full of wood chip going all the way down here as well um, and so basically the ground's been dug over um, with a spade uh, quite loosely just to get um, to get the ground um, you know sort of up and moving and get out any perennial weeds and then basically I've layered on top of that the um, the compost the, the, the grass cuttings um, some chicken manure and also the wood chips and uh, what I'm going to do now is basically rotivate um, all that into the ground that will make the ground um, really fertile and also it will hold a lot of moisture which is exactly what gourds and beans need and that's exactly the same preparation as I made on the front part there for the um, for the beans and the onions so I'm just going to rotivate this in now and I'll show you what it all looks like when it's finished okay so that's the ground all gone over so I've, I've gone over that a few times now and basically that's mixed all of the grass the chicken manure and the and the chippings and the and everything else all into the ground as you can see it's all nicely broken up now now that will it, at the minute it looks like it's in a bit of a hump that will um, sort of go down at the moment there's a lot of air in there as well so that will settle down over the next few weeks but um, you can just you can just see how much stuff has gone in there it's um, you know it's made for a nice um, bed now with anything as I've explained to you in the past um, on, on a number of occasions growing vegetables or, or any plant successfully is all about getting the ground um, exactly as it should be so nice and fertile you know you've got all of the, the things in there that are going to you know the plant's going to need to grow and, and, and sort of flourish so if you can get the ground right then the, the, the plant will just naturally grow um, really well so obviously what I've got in here is, is the grass and the wood chip are not only going to add um, things like nitrogen and carbon to the ground but they're also going to hold moisture and things like beans and gourds and stuff they're very hungry when it comes to water so you know that will that will help to hold the moisture in there then obviously all of the um, the manure and the um, the compost out of all the compost bins that's all going to also hold moisture but it will also add all of the um, you know the MPK um, into the you know the phosphorus the, the potassium and the nitrogen into the ground so you're going to get you know a good level of um, everything that you need in the ground so basically what's going to happen then so all, all of this is dug over it's all had exactly the same treatment so we're going to be putting pumpkins butternut squashes courgettes in this area here and then the beans are basically going to go from um, from from kind of this point here over to here so I'll show you the clip of me putting the um, the sticks in because obviously I didn't when I put those canes in there I didn't take a video this year so I'll just quickly show you um, me putting the canes in here when I do that in the next few days but um, as I say this this ground will will sort of go down so what you need to do is leave it a few um, few days or, or, or ideally a few weeks let it all settle down and then when you put the uh, you know when you plant the gourds in the ground's not going to move too much uh, what I will be doing as soon as I've planted the um, the gourds and um, the pump, you know, all, all the pumpkins, the courgettes, and the squashes in here is I'm going to put another layer of grass as a mulch around those plants um, so that it, you know, it holds the moisture um, sort of in even more. But that's the ground preparation for, as I say, the gourds and the beans. Okay, so I'll just take you on a quick tour around the allotment. So basically, in this green area, as you can see, the tomatoes are really starting to come on now. Um, they've really sort of thickened up and started to grow really well over last week. So on this side here, we've got the um, the um, um, celeriac, um, and as you can see, that's that's really grown in the last few weeks. This this hot weather really does bring on the plants. We've got some some pepper plants at the bottom here. These are the um, the mohawk red pepper plants. Then here we've got the uh, the money maker tomatoes. I've got some more money maker tomatoes here. Um, these are the gardener's delight. These are the small um, red red sort of sort of cherry tart tomatoes. And then we've got celery here. And then we've got the other peppers. We've got jalapenos there. Um, we've got the um, the long red 
um, Moroccan um, peppers there. And then right on the end there, we've got the, um, the, the sweet peppers, you know, the large sort of peppers. Um, just over here, we've got some more of the, um, the tomatoes that were put in later. These were brought up to the allotment um, um, the other night because they're getting a little bit leggy in the house. So um, I've got some more money making, some alicante there, so I'll be potting those up. Um, I don't think I'm going to need too many more to be honest with them what I've got already. So that's the first greenhouse. Um, out here obviously the, um, the comfrey is going really well. This is growing another foot this week. So I'll be cutting that down to make some, um, some comfrey tea in the, next, um, in the next few days. As you can see the bees are really enjoying it, which is why I've not cut it down yet. Uh, the bees have really been um, buzzing around us over the next, uh, the last few um, weeks. Um, down here we've got um, mint, balm, some thyme plants there, uh, and obviously hollyhocks here. And then over here we've got some more mint, sage. The rosemary is not looking very um, happy with itself. It's not a disease um, because this this rosemary plant here, which is a different plant, doesn't have it at all. But um, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. If anybody's got any hints or tips of why this is why this has happened um, please let me know i'm not quite sure but what i'm going to do is leave it for a few more weeks um, I, i'm not sure if it's because the ground is too wet for it but something's not quite right i don't believe it's a disease as i say because this plant here um, is not suffering with it and they're only planted about a foot apart so to have one go like this and not the other one i'm, I'm not quite sure um, what's causing it because obviously the ground conditions are almost the same if not identical so it can't be the ground conditions um, and you know they're both getting the same amount of water the only thing difference between the two plants is the one at the back is slightly older than the one at the front but uh, apart from that they're basically the same plant and variety okay in this um, green here we've got the um, we've got the parsnips here in the propagator they're not coming up as of yet but um, there's, there's, there's time for that yet. Obviously, parsnips are slow um, to, um, you know, to sort of germinate. Here we've got the um, these are the string beans or the French beans, as you can see. They're they're, they're doing really well. All the ones that aren't showing yet, I've, I've just left this one to show you an example. All I'm doing is I'm just um, get another couple, get another couple of beans, and then just pushing those in like that. So if they haven't shown already, then I'm just putting a couple more beans in. Um, to try and get all of those because I need 90 plants um, out of that lot. The sunflowers here, um, I've just transplanted these over so in some I had none and others I had two or three so what I've done is I've put them all into singular um, pots so they've, you know, so they've each got their own pot. Um, this is the third, um, sorry, fourth tomato variety. This is the um, golden sunrise, the yellow ones. So they're growing quite nicely in there as you can see. These are growing into quite nice uh, sort of healthy little plants now. So they are catching up. I mean, I'm, you know, as I said in the last video, I'm around, I'd say three or four weeks behind where I am normally with tomatoes. But um, you know, these are, these are most certainly trying to sort of catch up, to, you know, to where they should be. So um, yeah, so we should be all right with the tomatoes. Um, the fuchsia's not done very much, to be honest with you, um, over the last couple of weeks. But um, you know, it, it is still growing. This is the um, asparagus that's that's been um, potted up this year. Um, the Don Pedro plant, as you can see, is really starting to shoot. We've got another shoot here. Dahlias are going to go out very shortly, um, but they're growing really well. Cauliflowers, as you can see, they're they're most certainly ready to go out now. Um, they're the um, cucumber plants. There's nine cucumber plants there, so they're ready to get um, to be put into the greenhouse as soon as we've got all this out of the way. The next batch of spring onions doing really well. Um, there's there's a little bit of green algae forming on the top there, which which is a sign of overwatering. But um, but yeah, they're growing really well. The hollyhocks still got those four growing there. Those are this year's um, asparagus plants, which will which are going to be potted up before too much longer. Strawberry plants at the back there. Then we've got aquilegia. Um, some small aquilegia plants there. This is the rest of the um, Don Pedro planter seeds that we put in this year, uh, which are doing quite well. Um, this is the celeriac, as you can see, the first true leaves are coming. So there's some more celeriac there, but uh, as you know, as you know, in the other greenhouse there, um, the celeriac's doing really well. This is a second um, batch of sunflowers. This is the multi-headed um, sunflowers. These were put in last week. Um, I didn't do a video clip on it because it's basically the same as these here. But um, they're starting to come through now, um, and these are the um, the um, runner beans. As you can see, they're they're growing really well. I've kept them underneath the bench because they tend to grow a bit better in shade. 
Okay, on top of here we've got the broccoli which needs to be pricked out very shortly, um, but I'll need room to do that. Um, and then we've got the alpine strawberries at the back, and then here we've got the gourds. Um, these these here are um, butternut squashes. Then we've got um, we've got three courgette plants there which are about to go out. And then at the back there we've got the five pumpkin plants um, which are also ready to go out now. So I will be pot uh, putting these out. Um, in the very near future. So that's the second greenhouse. Apart from, of course, the uh, the grapevine, as you can see, the grapes are really starting to form now. So I do need to start taking off some of these so that the uh, the remaining ones really fill out. But um, there's there's loads of little uh, bunches of grapes on there. So all I need to do, as I say, is is cut off uh, probably about half, if not more, of those, so that the ones that are remaining do form properly into fruit. Okay, just moving around here then. Um, ignore this. This is the this is the rubbish tip at the moment. So I've I've been clearing out um, various areas of the uh, the allotment. So this is to be sorted. Um, here, as you can see, this asparagus is growing really strongly. Uh, you can't beat asparagus like that. I mean, that's got to be best part of three quarters of an inch in diameter. Um, so that's growing really well, as you can see at the back there as well. There are some weeds coming through. Uh, which I need to get out, but uh, the bindweed, what I've decided to do is um, declare chemical warfare on that because I've been pulling at it and it just seems to come back worse. So what I'm doing is I'm letting it grow a little bit, I'm going to pull it onto the path and then I'm going to spray it with um, um, some weed killer to try, and, some systemic weed killer to try and kill the roots off. Um, unfortunately I don't like doing it, but um, unfortunately I don't think I'm, I'm, uh, I'm faced with many other options than that. Uh, again here the comfrey, this is a different um, variety of comfrey but as you can see the, the bees love it just as much and um, you can see there he's um, merrily um, getting his pollen out of there, covered all over his, with, on his back legs. Right and then down here the strawberry um, patch is doing really well. Um, strawberries have um, really come on in the last couple of weeks. What I do need to do is get in there and get a few weeds out again um, and obviously along here we've got the um, Unfortunately the pear tree died there as you know, but the, the rest of that's pretty much as it was um, in the last video when I showed you. So we've got the, the cherry trees doing alright and then the two jostabri, and then at the far end there we've got the apple tree. But um, that's doing okay. The um, potatoes are starting to come through as you can see along the rows, but I am getting some weed as well. So what I need to do is go along with the, um, with the potato hoe and hoe them back up again. And what that'll do is it'll kill the weeds in between the rows. Um, it's, it's most certainly important that you do it at this stage when the weeds are really small, because the smaller they are, the easier they are to kill. So I'm just going to go along there, obviously missing the potato plants, but uh, just hoeing it up. Um, I have um, put the final row of potatoes in here and I've, I've hoed up these two rows already so as you can see the weed isn't anywhere near as bad here. Um, so those are the potatoes. Obviously the, um, the sweet peas are doing really well. Um, they're starting to grip onto the, um, the framework now so they'll soon um, grow up onto the frame. Okay in here this is the, the first tunnel. Um, come in Dorothy, come on. So on this side here we've got the, um, the kale um, and I, would, I don't know if you can see but I'm starting to see evidence of damage on these leaves. I have looked under but I've not found any caterpillars as of yet. So I'm not quite sure what's causing the damage. I don't know if it's aphids or what. There seems to be something on there actually. Um, but anyway, possibly beetles but I'll um, keep my eye on that. In fact there's a, I don't know if you can see there, there's actually a cabbage white butterfly in here which I'll need to get rid of. Um, anyway, uh, so the the, um, the kale's doing well on this side of the tunnel. Um, this part here needs to be dug out. There's a bit of bindweed in here as you can see and the remains of some parsnips as well. So I'll, I'll dig all that out and then the, um, the um, cauliflower is going to go into there. Um, and then down this side here we've got the, um, the first lot of um, calabrese. And as you can see some of them have already um, started to form the heads. So what I'll do is I'll pick, I'll pick those now because they're not going to get any better. And um, I'll basically um, leave the plants in for now. But basically, um, they're not going to get those plants aren't going to get any bigger now. They form the flower head. So the the, the plants basically uh, run to seed. But as I say, there's a second lot of calabris gone in to replace these in a few weeks' time. Right. Okay. So that's the first tunnel. 
Uh, between the, the, the two tunnels, obviously, we've got the, uh, the cow running to seed. I don't know if you can see, but we've got some really nice seed pods now, which are um, starting to fatten up. So next year's seeds will be in there. You can see here, look, so what I'll be doing is I'll be picking these off. I'll, I'll, I'll leave these to dry now. And then as soon as the plants have dried, all of these seed pods here, I'll be collecting those um, for seed. So inside here, it's like a, almost like a bean pod or a, or a pea pod. That'll be packed with little seeds inside there. So I'll be collecting those um, in the near future. Obviously we've got three rows of parsnips here, but there's nothing coming through as of yet. Um, I have been looking along, but there's nothing come through quite yet. What I might be tempted to do actually is water these rows um, tonight. Um, just to try and bring them on a bit, but that's where the parsnips are anyway. Right, in this second tunnel we've got um, we've got the um, the beetroot on this side, so that's been watered a few times this week. With beetroot you most certainly need to keep it watered until it um, settles in. So that's been watered, and on this side obviously we've also got the, um, this is the spinach beet. Um, that, that's also been kept watered once every other, I've been watering it every other night really. Um, and I'm going to put another batch in to fill that, that back part in there. And then where these, um, where these kales are at the moment, um, as soon as they've finished seeding, I'm going to take them out. And then there'll be some more spinach out there as well. But uh, the spinach is doing well. That's the first tunnel. So, sorry, the second tunnel. Okay, and down the front here, obviously we've got the, um, the rhubarb. Now... I don't know if you've noticed, but in the, in the centre of your rhubarb you will get flower pods like this. What you need to do is just pull that off, because that will take the energy out of the plant. So as soon as you see it, I've already, I've already pulled off probably three or four. But all you need to do is just snap, snap the top part off, um, and then that will stop the, uh, <coughs> all of the energy going into the seed. So all you need to do is just basically snap it like that, pull it off, and then it'll stop all the energy being sucked out of the plant. So this is where we got the onions, as you can see the the, the seeded onions are along there um, and then the the, um, the sets or the bulbs have been put in these other rows here. So I've, um, I've been watering those this week as well so hopefully they'll start to show in the next week or so. Um, this is where the beans are going to go. What I have done is planted up the front here the, the uh, calendula marigold plants that are always here. So I've set seed here, you can just see the seedlings starting to come up here along with some grass but um, that's um, that's been watered every other night as well so hopefully they'll come through the reason for the grass in between the uh, the beans is that's acting as two things really one as a mulch to uh, stop any weeds um, forming in the middle of the two rows and also obviously to keep the moisture in the ground but also it will feed nitrogen into the ground as well which which beans like a nitrogen rich ground so I, I typically put grass up between the two rows of um, bean canes to, as I say, to act as a mulch to stop the weeds and also to keep the ground moist, which is obviously what you need. This is the piece of ground. You've probably seen a clip on this one. Um, there's been loads of stuff put in here. There's been chicken manure, wood chippings, grass, um, and the, uh, the compost bins have emptied into here. Now, this is going to be really rich. Uh, moisture retaining soil now so this will be ideal for the gourds um, the pumpkins the squashes the courgettes they're going to go kind of in this area here and then at the end here there's going to be the the uh, the, uh, the runner beans are going to be put into here so um, <clears throat> that's all now dug over all the perennial weeds taken out and um, so that can all go in there so that's the that's what the allotment looks like at the moment um, and we're just about on the 19th of May so, I hope this episode was some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below, and I'll always get back to you, and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Old Garden.